Hey everyone, I'm creating this video to answer a couple great questions I was asked on LinkedIn. Namely, how did you decide on Barbados? And what were your biggest worries about going? I suppose I could write all of this out in a neat blog post, but I didn't want to create a blog to share my experiences. I wanted to create a YouTube channel. So every now and then I'll post these sunset soliloquies where we both watch a beautiful sunset while I answer a question or talk about a recent experience. So, how did I decide on Barbados? Well, I knew I wanted something tropical. I have been to Hawaii before and I loved it there, so I knew that I would likely do well in a tropical setting. There are other non-tropical countries in the world dipping their toes into this remote work visa revolution, such as Estonia and Greece and a couple others I can't remember. Those locations would be much different than Barbados, so the question you have to ask is what type of culture and lifestyle do you want? I definitely wanted something warm and tropical. And in my search to live in a new country, I also considered, considered Bermuda. Their one-year remote work visa had an application fee of only $263, far less than Barbados's $2,000. The, the two grand was not due unless you had been accepted for the visa, so there was no risk in losing two grand by having your application denied. And as a side note, in November, I read that around 80% of applications for the welcome stamp in Barbados were accepted. So the odds seem to be pretty good. I think Barbados is weeding out the applicants with short-term interests by including that two grand fee. Uh, no one would stay here just for a month after paying two grand to get the visa, but they might if it only costs $263. So Barbados seems to want long-term commitments, which is what I wanted myself. I never intended this to be a two-month experiment. Barbados ultimately seemed like the better option than Bermuda because they were a bigger island, uh, meaning there are more things to do and experience, and the cost of living seemed a little bit lower in Bermuda, especially when comparing rental properties. I didn't want my time in Barbados to be significantly more expensive than my time in the U.S., or more expensive than my life in the U.S., and as an audio engineer working for a podcast company, believe it or not, I don't make 200000 a year, so I do have some budget constraints. I was willing to pay a little extra, but I believe that if I put in a little work, I could make it cost the same or perhaps even less. I'll do a video sometime in the future about cost of living here on the island, but to be brief, I have found a living situation that is roughly equal to the cost of living I experienced in Denver, Colorado, where I previously lived. Now, my biggest concern before applying for the welcome stamp was the internet. Naturally, I can't work remotely if I can't secure a strong and reliable internet connection. Fortunately, Barbados began, in, began a nationwide initiative in 2015 to make the entire island capable of receiving fiber-to-the-home internet. Uh, there are two major internet providers here on the island, Digicel and Flow. Both offer, offer comparable fiber-to-the-house plans with speeds up to 500 megabytes download available. And I knew I didn't need that strong of an internet connection but I decided to play it safe and pay for the 250 megabyte download, 125 megabyte upload plan, which cost me about $100 US per month. Uh, I suppose I could have tried to save a little money here by going with a lesser plan, but my employer was already so supportive with my decision to move here that I didn't want to potentially sour our work relationship by initially promising them the internet would be great and then later having problems with inconsistent internet. So I was willing to pay for more than what I needed in exchange for peace of mind. And as a side note, Barbados has an ongoing plan to provide free Wi-Fi in numerous public places throughout the island. And from everything I've read, it seems like they're making intentional strides to become a digital nomad hotbed within the world. Most digital nomads won't rely on the internet as much as me and my job does, uh, which I use the internet to record interviews through Zoom, so I can't have any sort of dropouts in the internet. So the free Wi-Fi provided all over the island would, more than, would be more than enough to check emails, upload files, and other internet light job requirements others might have. So if your job can be done remotely and only requires a basic internet connection, uh, then I think Barbados is a fantastic fit for you. The only other significant concern was phone communications. Now I knew that Verizon wouldn't have coverage here, so I have been, and currently still am, working out a solution for that. With the non-essential businesses being closed in February, I haven't been able to buy a local SIM card for my phone, uh, which is what I've been told is the easiest solution. Uh, I don't want to lose the phone number I've had for the last 15 years, so there may be a few extra steps I need to do to achieve that. We'll see. Other than that, 
I don't know that I had any other real worries about moving here. I knew the culture would be different, but I'd been to foreign countries before and new experiences have never bothered me. Uh, I knew my diet would ha probably have to change a little bit as the cost of some foods here would be more expensive. I knew things would take longer to do without owning a car, but I was willing to incorporate more walking into my lifestyle anyway. I'm about one mile away from the nearest supermarket, which means I can't buy a ton of groceries in one shopping trip as I have to walk home with anything I buy. There are taxis available, but it doesn't feel right to buy a taxi just for a one mile trip. And lastly, with this first lockdown dominated month out of the way, I think it's fair to assume that my videos in March and beyond will be far more varied than what I created in February. And if you, dear listener, have any, lesson, have, have any questions you'd like me to answer in a future sunset soliloquy, feel free to reach out and just ask me. I'll see you all later.